Okay, 2.4, equation of a circle. A circle is a set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from a fixed point, called the center. So whenever, think about when you used to use a compass, okay? To draw a circle with a compass, you would have planted a, a point, had another point, and then allowed you to draw your circle around that point. So one had a point, the other one had a pencil and that would allow you to draw your circle. So in a Cartesian plane, we're going to be looking at the circle where the fixed point is at the origin. The center is at 0, 0, and we would draw a circle so that anywhere along this circle, any point along this circle, is equal distance from the center. When you think about it, what is that line called? So a line that is equal distance from the center to any point on the circle, anywhere around this circle, what is the name of that line? That's right, folks. That line is known as the radius. So if you have some point, such as x and y, the distance from the origin to x and y is going to be r. What is r? Well, this formula represents the equation of a circle. This x squared plus y squared equals r squared is the equation of a circle with center 0, 0 and radius r. That's right, folks. r represents the radius. Now think back to lines. What was the equation of a line you learned? That's right. You should remember it as y equals mx plus b. Now, once you know, when you think about the line, equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, what are the two letters that remain at all times? That's right, y and x. And the same can be said for the equation of a circle. x and y stay where they are. They do not change. What will change is the value of r. So r will be the radius, and that's specific to a specific circle given. So another thing that's unique is that we can find the length of the radius if we know a coordinate. We could take plug in the coordinate for x and y, square each of them individually, take the sum of it, and then do the square root. That is to find the distance, or sorry, the um, actual length of the radius. So, how can we use this with what we're going to be doing? Example 1. Very simple. You asked to write the equation of a circle with center 0, 0 and race one, radius 1 third units. So r is equal to 1 third. So plug in the value of r, folks. That's right. You have x squared plus y squared equals r squared is our general formula. We plug in the value for r, which is root 1, sorry, not root, which is 1 over 3 squared. Now, knowing that, you need the equation of the circle. Now, the equation of the circle can be one of two ways. This way, up here, is where you normally would, it would normally look like this. And this would be our radius. Sometimes, though, your circle could look like this. Remember when we did standard form of an equation of a line? The standard form had some specific rules you must follow. A it must be no fractions, no decimals, it has to be only whole numbers or integers. And the value of x has to be positive. So here we both have positive, but what's unique is that we have no fraction for this one. How did we get here? Well, we took the 9 and multiplied it by each piece over here and by this side, which gave us 1, and the other side gave us 9x squared plus 9y squared. All right, now example number two. A circle is defined by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 36. And you're asked to sketch a graph. You're asked to test sketch a graph of x squared plus y squared equals 36. How do you do that? Well, think back to the formula x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and you find out that r squared is 36. How long is r? That will be 6. So we sketch a graph. We take out the points, and we go 6 across, 6 up, 6 down, and 6 
left. We find, all right, how do we do that? R squared is 36. That means R is equal to 6. That means the radius length from the center to the outward point is 6, 6, 6, and 6 going down. That's right, folks. The radius is 6. And the diameter is 12, just so that you note that. All right. But what's important is the equation will tell us what the length of our radius is to draw the function. Okay, moving forwards. Next example, example 3. A circle has a center at 0, 0 and passes through the point 4, negative 3. You're asked to find the radius and equation of the circle, and then you're asked to find out if the point 3, negative 5 is inside the circle. So we're going to check both of those, but we're going to start with the first part. Part A, find the radius and length of the circle. Sorry, equation of the circle. So the circle has center 0, 0 and passes through the points 4 and negative 3. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared is our formula. We're going to substitute 4 and negative 3 for x and y into the equation to find our r squared and eventually our r. So we plug it in. Oh, look at all that. Lots of work there. Let's go slowly. We get these values at sub 4, negative 3 for x and y into the equation. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And we get 4 squared plus negative 3 squared is equal to r squared. That means r squared is equal to 25. So our radius length is 5 and the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 25. Part B. Is the point 3, negative 5 inside the circle, on the circle, or outside the circle? Now I want you to think about this. So we're going to do a little quick sketch to explain what's going on here. We have a circle. And that's going to be our circle, that, this circle that we have in the question. Okay, so 4, negative 3 is one of the points. And note that this particular circle has a defined radius of 5. Now, not all circles do, but in this case it does. We need to know if the point 3, negative 5 is inside the circle. To do that, we need to, if we had a point that was inside the circle, it would look like this. You would draw the circle around, and guess what, folks? That means the radius of that circle, you guessed it, is smaller than the radius of the original green circle. Now, what happens if it's outside? Well, let's draw it out. A point outside, we draw it, and look, there's a lot of work there, I know, just bear with me, guys. Okay? And in, when you draw the outside one, you notice again that the outside circle is bigger than the green circle, which means when you plug it into the left side, right side check, you'll find out that it's going to actually be bigger. Are you ready? That's right, let's keep going. Mathematically, we have to prove it. So we're going to check 3, negative 5. Where are we going to check it? Into one of the, into the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. Where do we get that? We got that from part A. That's our formula. That's the equation of the green one. So we plug it in. 3, negative 5 in for x and y, and you find out that 3 squared plus negative 5 squared is equal to, that's all right, you guessed it, 34. So now we see that the left side that we plugged in is actually greater than the right side, which is given to us. So if the left side is greater than the right side, it means, in this case, because we were comparing it on the right side, we're comparing that side with everything else, okay, the leftover stuff. And we find out, lo and behold, when the left leftovers are greater than the radius one that we're given, that no 3, negative 5 cannot be inside the circle. It's got to be outside the circle in, a for, in order for this to be true. All right, one more. Example number four. A puff of smoke from a smokestack is released. The radius increases by 10 meters per second. Find the equation of the smoke ring three seconds after the puff is released. So the idea is that it releases it and it goes into the atmosphere. 
And what's happening is that they want to uh, know the equation of the smoke ring three seconds after the puff is released. All right. Well, 10 meters per second means, and this is the radius, folks. It's not the diameter. Very important to note. Sometimes you might be given the diameter. So you would have to divide the value given by 2 to find out what the radius is increasing by. So in our case, the radius is increasing by 10 meters per second. If it was diameter, I would have divided this value by 2. So find the equation of the small ring. 10 meters per second times 3 is equal to 30. 30 what? 30 meters. So again, here's a drawing. Smoke ring, nice and big. We find out that that smoke ring is 30, has a radius of 30 meters. Let's use the formula. All right, that would be x squared plus y squared equals 30 squared. x squared plus y squared equals 900. So this is the equation of the smoke ring three seconds after the puff is released. So the answer is, therefore, the equation of the smoke ring, x squared plus y squared equals 900. This is the equation of the smoke screen, of a smoke ring, sorry, folks. All right, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you get the idea behind a circle. Take care. Have a numerical night.